Hey guys, my name is Brandon Peterson, and I'm doing my booktube review on this book by Yian Lee, Gold Boy, and Emerald Girl. It's a collection of short stories. I'm going to focus on two specifically. The first one being Number Three Garden Road, and the second one being a short story titled Souvenir. So first we're going to cover a little bit about the author. Her name is Yian Lee. She was born in Beijing, China, and as of today, she's 45 years old. So she's really not that old. She's got a lot of life left in her, she's going to write a bunch of new stories, and honestly, I'm tempted to read some of them after reading the work that I've read. Um, she focuses mainly on short stories and novels, and because she was born in Beijing, China, a lot of her stories are based in Beijing, or they're based in large cities that aren't named, but we can assume that it's Beijing because just from all of her other works, that's what she likes to write about. So being from Beijing, Li uses a lot of names of Chinese or Asian descent and this kind of gives that feel of just even though the city might not be named in some of her short stories or novels you know or you can assume that it's somewhere in China possibly Beijing maybe another large city so in these short stories it's pretty common for Li to involve topics about love and children flashbacks just the Chinese culture from the few short stories that I've read and some research that I've done, the themes in her stories are pretty consistent throughout. They all revolve around uh, a male and female usually connecting, uh, maybe even falling in love depending on the story, or just having some sort of interaction. Another thing that goes on in Lee's short stories is that they're all written in third person, there's no I. So we all get this kind of flashback sense of story, and you, you can picture it really well, the way she words everything and just describes it. You can just, you can go back, and when you're reading, you can just see what's going on. So in the first short story, number three, Garden Road, there are two main characters, and Mei Ying and Mr. Chang grew up uh, next to each other. They were just a few apartments over, and they were only a couple years apart from one another, and their families are actually really good friends because their parents both had similar jobs working on farms. Mei Ying had moved away, and a couple decades later, she moved back. Mr. Chang still lived in the same apartment, and at the time, he was single, but Mei Ying didn't know that. She thought he thought he still had his wife. So when she moved back, she observed that Chang had been hanging out with all these girls, going to the nightclub, and she was kind of, she's kind of like, what's going on? I thought you had a wife. But she didn't talk to him. She just thought that. And so she kind of observed what he had been doing. But she had noticed that he didn't take any of the women that he went on dates with home. He would just dance with them at the nightclub. He would be such. He would be a gentleman about saying goodbye. He wouldn't uh, mislead them in any way. And so one day, Mei Lin was curious, and she went over and knocked on his door. But when she introduced herself by calling him Uncle Fatty, which was one of those childhood nicknames that he hadn't heard in decades, he was kind of astonished. And then all of a sudden, it clicked. He realized who Mei Lin was, and they went. He invited her into the apartment. And he just, he asked her how she'd been, what been, what had been going on. And this is where Malin learned about his late wife who had passed away from cancer. And the reason behind him going on dates with all these women to the nightclubs. And it was because his wife wanted him to find somebody to replace her because she wanted to die happy knowing that Cheng would be taken care of. And honestly, that's really sweet. And near the end of the short story, Mei Lin proposes that, you know, Chang, he hasn't had much luck with these other relationships. So Mei Lin proposes that they, one of them should sell their apartment and that they should move in together because Garden Street has is really hot and that they would make a lot of money selling one of the two apartments. And they're also older and living together, they don't need that much space because there's just one of them. They don't have any kids or any spouses or anything. And the end, they kind of get a little flirty, but it doesn't say that they ended up, you know, happily ever after or anything like that. We can only assume. The next short story is Souvenir, and the two main characters in the story are a young woman and a man. Their names are not given probably because this story can relate to anybody, it doesn't have to be specific to these two characters. So in the short story, the young woman 
is sitting on a public bench with her boyfriend. They're cuddling. They're just they're enjoying one another's company. And the man is walking by, notices the young woman, and thinks to himself, "Wow, that really reminds me of my late wife." So he ends up sitting down next to them. They kind of the couple kind of gives them dirty looks. They're like, "Really, all the places you had to sit right here." And then they kind of get back to what they were doing, realizing that he wasn't going to leave. So after a little while, the man finally says it. He goes, he goes, ma'am, you're really beautiful. You remind me of my late wife. And he kind of gives her this backstory, and she's really not that interested. She's trying to be polite because he is an elder. He just wants to, or she wants to respect him the best that she can. But she also wants to get out of the situation. So when she gets an opportunity, she goes across the street to the pharmacy to try to get away from him. But she also plans on buying something. Um, while she's there, she's checking out some things behind the counter, just looking, and she notices that the man had actually followed her into the store. She doesn't say anything to him because it is public. It is a public place. He is allowed in there. He's not bothering her in any way. He's just kind of he's following her, but he's keeping his distance, and also just he wants to talk to her. She knows it, but she just doesn't want to talk to him. So before the store closes. There's about 10 minutes left. The young woman actually goes over to the clerk, asks for a pack of pink condoms, and the man, is he gives this astonished look, and she kind of sees it in the reflection, and we learn that the man is just in disbelief. She can't believe, or he can't believe that a woman would give herself up to a man that she's not married to. It's just, it goes against everything the man knows. The clerk has no problem with it. She She's just doing her job. She gives the condoms and during the exchange they fall on the floor and the man rushes over, steps on him and confronts the young lady. He says, you know, what are you doing? Why are you giving yourself up to a man you're not married to? This is not proper. And you know, she, she tells him off in a polite way because he's still an elder. But So the pink condoms actually end up being um, the souvenir that the story is based around. The young woman realizes that she can keep these and show them to her kids and explain that love shouldn't be bounded whether you're married or not. Just how you feel is how you feel and you just do what makes you happy. So some specific quotes that stood out to me are the names that are used in the short stories Lee writes. And I'm actually going to read them off my phone because I don't want to butcher these names. But they are Asian names such as Mei Lin, Chang, Aelin, Mei, Lan, and Yin. And these are, these are Asian names that are not commonly heard in America, but from reading them, you know that they aren't traditional American names. And this is important to Lee's short stories because she likes to base her short stories in not, not just Beijing, but China specifically. Another quote that stood out to me, I'm also going to read it off my phone, was in the first story, the first short story. And it says that, but for now, he would like to think of himself as happily occupied. And this is near the end of the story where we don't know for sure if Chang and Mei Lin are going to fall in love. But after reading that, you can assume that they some, there's some sort of connection between the two. They have known each other in the past. And although nothing is for sure, it gives foreshadowing to something that might happen later on down the road. So another quote is from the second short story, and it says, She wondered how much they would understand love, and love despite the fatality of humankind. This quote is from the short story. It goes back to the condoms and the whole theme of love. And the young woman just w wants her children to understand love, and that humankind is so critical of love, who you love, how you love. So after reading these short stories, they kind of remind me of something I would read on a blog. Like, they're not super long like it's a novel but they're also not too short where it's like kind of a personal essay type thing it it's some it feels like something i would read online about an actual experience that had occurred and that's kind of important because it just shows lee's style of writing and i just i find it very relatable and i'm sure most of you would too so the final thing would i recommend this book slash collection of short stories Yes, I would recommend this book. I feel like it's very relatable for kids my age, kids a little older, and even older folk if they're interested in reading something like this. 
I feel like it's a very relatable book that can be used anywhere in the world and that it has a lot of meaning. Every story has a very common theme that every single person will understand. So that's my review on Gold Boy and Emerald Girl by Yeon Lee, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.